Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me today is Sam West, and we're going to be talking about the spell Faithful Hound. Ah, uh, all right. Well, just take it away, Sam. So this is Alarm as a fourth level spell, but it's also kind of spiritual weapon and also Alarm but it does a little bit more damage, but you can't move it. There's a lot of little intricate pieces here that take what is a series of underwhelming effects and makes a package that I'm pretty happy to stick on a character sheet, um, which is odd for me. I like a lot of the text on the spell, and I think that it is not apparently powerful, but there will be circumstances where you'll find places that this spell is exceptional. Um... All right, yeah, you know, we, we've talked about this before with, uh, I think it was Ice Storm, where you're not a fan of, you know, multi-effect spells, whereas I am. And this one, I'm, I'm struggling to be a super fan of it because it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I guess it, it could be used in a more active situation, but I'm thinking about it being used like alarm where you're going to sleep for the night and you, you set, set up your faithful hound to keep guard over the camp. And uh, that's, that's just not very exciting to me, but that's not the only way it could be used. Correct. Yeah. So um, at its minimum, how I think the spell should be taken as a, it is a stationary five foot range turret. You can stick oh, it to somewhere. It doesn't move. Yes. With you. This oh. does not move. Once you put it somewhere, that is where it is. Stay in forever. I'm just dropping in more grades in your book. This just keeps going down for you, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is, I think, fairly interesting, as in you have to pick a spot, but when you pick the spot, you have to, you no longer care about the spell full stop. This is a spell that doesn't eat your concentration, that gives you an extra 48 damage at the beginning of each turn. I let me double check that it doesn't eat your concentration. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, but it is the kind of spell that you just stick down and it does its thing. And is things come within five feet of it at the start of your turn, you could do have it attack them. This means where you put it is very important. Where your allies are going to be is very important. When you cast this can vary pretty wildly. Um, and in most of the circumstances, I think you're going to find surprising amounts of time where this will last three rounds do 12d8 damage and you'll be pretty happy with that for a fourth level spell slot it then flexibly can be an alarm with teeth um where you stick this literally next to you the moment something comes in 30 feet of you if it goes to attack you you bite it are alerted you can start doing things you can play mm -hmm. around it you can work defensively near your hound so it is not better than alarm at the alarm portion of it but comes with an powerful enough effect that i'm pretty pleased um, generally speaking with it. Now, that effect is going to be entirely determined by your knowledge of your party's tactics, your enemy's tactics, and the maps you're on. And there will definitely be places where this is completely useless, but there will be enough spots where this spell will just be bonus damage every round that I think it's worth considering. Yeah, I, I did look at it. An eight-hour duration does not require concentration. Um, so... All right. That you're means saying, you can't have multiple of these. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right. Now you're talking about map dependent. That's something I'm interested in. Where uh, okay. where would you what kind of map would you put this in on and where on the map would you put it? Okay. I think the most apparent and obvious one is narrow chokeholds. That seems like that's where the spell's gonna be at its best. I actually don't think that's true. Um I think it obviously seems like, oh, I would put this in spaces that creatures would pass through that I can get bites off of and stuff. This is better in battle maps where you have an available space next to your front, your, your, your fighting party, where you have your paladin and your barbarian going at something large and you stick this next to them and you are confident that creature is staying relatively still. And you can be confident with a variety of ways, whether you're sticking this next to entangling magic, whether you're sticking this next to the barbarian or monk that's actually grappling, whether you're sticking this in a spot that you're confident the kill giant's goal is to kill the barbarian that taunted him and it's not moving and smashing with its club every single turn. And I actually think that's more common than a lot of other, that a lot of 
battle maps make appear. I think a lot of fights end up being two sides crash into each other, they hit each other for 15 to 20 seconds, and then they, everyone's dead. And in that instance, this is three free rounds of attacks, which is great. In other battle maps, this can be a defensive tool where you're managing things from the sides. You know going, you're going, creatures are going to get on top of you. You are sure no matter what you do, there will be some amount of monsters that make it to you. You put this directly in front of you. Anything that comes to attack you is going to be within five feet of this, and you have a, a sentry turret that at the beginning of your turn is going to deal with one of them. That is useful. Um, and that, those are the two main circumstances where I see this being a powerful effect. In battle maps where you're fighting lots of little things or you're fighting, your paladin and barbarian need to get to spaces where you're aggressively moving up on things. I think it's a little bit worse. This is relatively short range. It's only 30 feet. So you can't like dunk this on their back line and force them to move towards you. You have to put this in a defensive position. But if you're in a defensible position, if you're in a situation where monsters are coming at you and not the other way around, you can position this in spots where you're covering, a because it, it function will cover nine, or eight squares around it plus the square it's in. You can cover a pretty wide area by having a decent placement of it. And there are going to be monsters that will be forced if they want to attack your paladins and fighter and friends to be in those spaces. Now it is, is a 30 foot range. However, it doesn't disappear until you move hundred feet away from it. So yes. there's that. That's helpful. If you, if you are like, if you have the eight hours and are prepping and you are like, I know for certain this is the space that my barbarian and fighter are going to die in. This is where it can go. Sure. And then you can run as far away as you'd like. I think most of the time, if you're casting this for the combative effect of it, which again, I think is underrated, um, you're going to probably need to do it somewhere close to you, which is now, a little bit harder. That range, it does let you retreat a little bit, which is nice. It gives okay. you some breathing room. Um, I, I know, I, I was looking at the spell description. The, the Faithful Hound itself has no stats. Can it not be killed? It, yeah, it, it, it functionally is a spell effect. It functionally right. doesn't exist. Okay. My understanding, it's a phantom watchdog only in name. Other than yeah. that, it is a mechanical attack roll every round, um, which is great. Yeah. It you even know, says you, the hound is invisible to all creatures except you and cannot be harmed. Oh, so oh, it cannot be harmed. All right. Uh, but you can see it, so it is an actual, like, it, it has a hound look. It, That's cool. it basically allows you to know where it is. Right. Um, yeah. You know, you were talking about positioning. I, I kind of like just sticking it out in the middle of an open space. And, uh, you know, surprise when, you know, so you're casting other spells to, or effects or whatever and uh, just having enemies run into it, not knowing it's there. That's, uh, that's fun. So there is the big downside. This isn't like you. So this doesn't get attack opportunity or anything fun. This will only ever make the attacks at the start of your turn, which means once things are in place, this isn't making any. This isn't making attacks on anything that isn't next to it. So if creatures run past it, it does jack shit. It sits there and lets, idly lets them run right past it. They can mm. run through it. It doesn't. It isn't tangible. It's a phantom. Yeah, but they don't know where it is. Sure. So if they stop next to it, absolutely. Yeah. But they do have to stop there in order for you to get it. So the wide open space is a little bit harder to make work. Yeah, but true. if you're like, I know it's gonna dash there. Put it down there. Get a free forty-eight. It's fun. It's definitely not as good as positioning it defensively, which is what the spell's kind of supposed to do. It's kind of supposed to be this yeah. sentry defense turret. Um, but yeah, that can be a, a, the goblins run at you. One of them gets bit and goes, what the hell's going on? The next one goes, what are you doing, you coward? Runs right up, gets bit as well. And it's like, okay, you're not crazy. Let's leave. <laughs> Go heal your friend. Yeah. This is uh. the... All of the other elements of it, so it helps that this sees onto the ethereal. It helps that this sees invisible creatures. Those are two relatively uncommon abilities. Specifically, the ethereal bit is a little bit harder to come by. Odds of that being important? Very low. Um, the invisibility is marginally more useful. It isn't super useful because all it will do is bark. So like, you're not going to be able to have it pinpoint where the invisible creatures are. You can just say, hey, when you see an invisible creature within 30 feet of you, be loud. That doesn't tell you where the invisible creature is. It just tells mm -hmm. you that there is an ethereal or invisible creature. It also ig ignores illusions, is there? Yep, I'm, sure. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of where that could be useful, but uh, you got anything for that? It, no, I actually think it's an active downside that ignores illusions. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Because, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, if someone's trying to pretend a ghost is coming to kill you, that's a very specific instance where it's like, that's not a real ghost because my faithful hound isn't barking. Ha ha, got him. That's not a real invisible stalker that I can't see. That's, yeah, that's I, I wouldn't call useful. that a disadvantage. Yeah, but 
just not yeah. super useful. If that, I actually would call it a disadvantage in that. Right, why? Because it it's not so it not alerting you to illusion is a moot point and then also won't detect when illusion magic is happening around you. So if, uh, for example, hallucinatory, hallucinatory terrain takes place and things start to look like a hellscape, you may not know that you are under a hallucinatory, hallucinatory terrain and your dog certainly doesn't either, right? <laughs> right? It's not telling you anything about the environment that's changed, right? However, it, however, all right, if, uh, if it was real, I mean, wh- how's the dog going to react? That, it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. tell you anything there. But if it's yeah. gonna, if its job is to detect things, it doesn't detect delusion, which is notable, right? Again, that's that's not a downside. That's just mood. I I think there will be more, and this is so marginal. This is like next to never. <laughs> yes. There will be slightly more instances where this not detecting something as an illusion is going to be detrimental. In that you will you will be there will be some illusory force that can act and take actions that will be affecting you that the dog isn't going to be able to detect there will be an illusory uh, there are messenger. illusions that there can do that yeah some kind of illusory entity that is sent to perform a task that will circumnavigate faithful hound if you're a dm and you're looking for a weird way to get around this because for some reason you're finding it is like warping how you're attacking the party or something there's a neat tip for you send an illusory bird to go infiltrate the brain of the wizard or whatever it's never going to come up realistically but again we're, this is sam arguing minutia this is functionally pointless you're right more or less it is the non-text all right uh what else do we have to say about faithful hound um there isn't a whole lot more to say i don't think i think if you're using it for the alarm purposes of it it is you not having to take a spell alarm, but you're also probably long resting, so it's not really costing you a spell slot or anything. And at that point, it's a slight upgrade, a slight downgrade. It affects different areas. It's harder to position, but it's kind of a moot point. It's kind of a a utility resource, a tool at that point. It helps that it's attached to a moderately useful damage spell that is costing you no actions after the cast, which I think makes it it, honestly quite a good spell in my book. I think, um, again, this is an undercast spell. It's definitely hard to use, and it's definitely going to have encounters where you're not going to get anything out of it. It's going to be encounters where it's like, nope, the space is too wide open. We're trying to get to a specific monster. I literally can't use the spell here. I think that's an it is good enough in enough circumstances and has the fallback of at minimum it's a neat utility spell that gives us an extra alarm that I'm pretty happy to have. Now, unlike other spells, uh, this does not really give you advantage on, on um, like moving, you know, forcing characters into a space on your yeah. turn right because it doesn't synergize yeah. with many things it is good with it is good with things that lock things down if you can consistently keep in a monster in an area that is adjacent yeah. to it that is where it is kind of at its best but compared to things like uh, you know um stationary effects like uh the daggers spinning daggers cloud of daggers where you mm-hmm. can push things in and out of it over and over again or hit like a, the wall of blades that is just you literally shoving things into it for a meat grinder effect those definitely have a little bit more gimmicky stuff you can do. Faithful Hound is just, where is it going to be? Where can we know it's going to be? Where's an area I can control? It is good at that. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess, the, uh, oh, hey, we need a Sam score. It's a three out of five. Three I don't want to oversell it. Yeah. But it is useful. And this is a spell you're not going to necessarily be embarrassed to have on your character sheet. No. All right. Um, yeah, I'd agree with that. I, I might give it a 3.5, but... uh. Yeah, oh, we're getting three, into the death right? Oh, God. I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 three feels low, but no. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's not warping the game that much. You're right. There aren't, it's not useful in most encounters. It's fine. Agreed. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. And uh, thank, thank you, God. listeners and watchers. We will. Uh, that was Faithful Hound, and we will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, or you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.